Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Um, I've just turned this little stick, which you're going to see in this video, uh, and I call them ego sticks uh, because if you manage to make one without breaking it, it's good for your ego. Now, if you're turning anything this long and this thin, you need to hold it at one end and then just support it at the other. You do not want the tailstock wound in tight because that bends the uh, bends the blank. So this. Is running pretty well on center as is. I don't even want to squeeze it off because that will again deflect the uh, the blank from its where it wants to go, and uh, that just makes everything more difficult. Right, so roughing it down. We'll start at one end. This is a half inch uh, skew chisel little V groove across the grain just to um, go across the fibers and then I can get my hand over the tool hand keeps the tool on the rest these fingers just stop the wood bouncing a bit but there's not much pressure in there at the moment and then once I've got a smooth bit there then I can use that finger to to uh, keep that. We need some better light. I need that finger to uh, equalize any pressure I'm putting in with the tool. And here, when it's running smooth, I'm doing this long point down so that. Uh, any pressure I put into the cut is going parallel to the axis. I can do it from here, but if I do that, any pressure I put in is directly against the axis. It increases the uh, pressure against the wood and therefore causes more flexing. So, long point down. As you saw there, it's already flexing a bit. This is uh, the Queensland Rose Mahogany, which is a uh, fairly nice even grain timber. Very important to have the grain running absolutely parallel to the lathe axis. Now I didn't generally do smaller stuff, the detail in, uh, in the middle first. I just, uh, over the years I found that easier. And when you're coming in here, any pressure you put against the wood needs to be taken up by your finger behind. And there are various ways of doing that. One is to come in from underneath. The thumb is going to stop the tool kicking back. So if you're going to do a bead, roll the corner of the tool into the wood. These fingers support the cut. So the dynamics of that are that the tool is pivoted against my thumb. These fingers are equalizing any pressure against the wood. The less pressure you have against the wood, uh, the better. The cooler your fingers stay. Uh, coming across here, I can't really, I've got a fairly small hand uh, in relation to the rest and you can come either across the top like that but then the tool post and the banjo get in the way so you've got to come over the top. So this is acting like a three point steady, fingers basically equalizing any pressure put in with the tool. The thumb is acting as a fulcrum and moving the tool forwards. It's getting quite springy. Okay, I want to put a groove in the middle of that little bead, forefinger comes up underneath, and 
just need to make sure you're arcing the point of the tool into the wood. This finger is also acting to help control the, uh, the flexing. And you just go gently. Coming up here, I can now grip the tool. I've got my fingers almost round the other side. Now, people get very worried about doing this because they feel that they're going to get cut. I've never seen anybody cut themselves doing this. Um, if maybe I've just shown them what to do. Um, you shouldn't be pushing the tool into the wood. You should be letting the wood come onto the tool. So there really is not much forward motion or the, the tool's moving forward, but only when the bit of wood that it's cutting has gone away. So there's no real force involved. Again, thumb acting as a lateral fulcrum. I'll just do a little curve with a little skew. I'm just kind of sliding the edge around the corner, around the curve. you come down to the other end flexing quite a bit so you need to support it around here you drop the wrist slightly and again I prefer to work so I can get my fingers underneath but the other way of doing it is to have your hand over the top not so convenient just here this, this provides much better support So the forward power pushing the tool forward is my thumb. Just get the dust off the tool. That, that timber is probably a bit weak, so uh, a bit nervous about doing too much more on that. But that the surface is fine for sanding. Um, and you can see it's fairly flexible. 
So, in fact, that's fine. I uh, could do a little bit more just there. Finger over the back, so it's like a movable tailstock. Now, coming up the other end, when you come to part it off, It's held at that end. You don't want to let go because it'll just break. But you can just pull the whole thing onto the blade. Onto the edge. Oops, and I meant to move the rest of fraction. Down at this end. is 26 centimeters which is uh, two and a half inches <laughs>